Can we ride every single ride at Disneyland in a single day? That's what we're about to find out. So let's get going. It's gonna be a great day today because it's a genie day. And uh, we grabbed Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway first. It's a toss up between that and Indiana Jones. I saw the Mickey and Minnie's was out to 9 a.m. Indiana Jones was still 8.30. And I wanna grab that furthest one out. In the process of grabbing it, it actually jumped back to 8.30. However, since we're gonna be rope dropping Fantasyland, I thought we would just leave Mickey and Minnie's and we'll do something different than we did last time. It is 7.45 in the morning. And we are approaching the rope drop crowd. We do want to go up to Fantasyland because we want to knock out all the rides without Genie Plus as fast as possible this morning. And most of those are going to be up in Fantasyland, so that's where we're headed. Now, most people coming into Fantasyland are going to go to Peter Pan's flight, but because today is an early entry day, Peter Pan is already up to a 25 minute wait before Rope Drop even let go. So we are actually gonna come over here to Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Now, ordinarily we would choose Alice in Wonderland as our Rope Drop destination. However, we looked and it still is temporarily closed. So it's having a delayed opening this morning. And we are getting to walk straight onto this attraction, which is awesome. It is like 8.05, the line for Peter Pan, massive, but we are going right next to the busiest of the Fantasyland rides that's open, and that is going to be Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. In fact, they don't even have the outdoor queue open at the moment, they just have this line. The line wasn't moving for whatever reason, so we decided to hop over here to Dumbo, um, because this one can get really long throughout the day as well, so we need to knock it out early. There's just a, a lot of people up at Fantasyland already because even this line's pretty long. Well, it took us about 10 minutes, which is much better than the 35 or higher that it will likely be later on in the day. So I feel like this was a good decision. Um, after this, we're gonna go up to Toontown for our lightning lane. All right, James, are you ready to fly high? Are no! You, are you ready to steer us? Yes! What are we gonna do? Go down and up and down and up. Are we going high? Because we all start off high. Oh, why are we going down? Let's go up. We want to go up. Let's get higher than them. You want to get higher than them? They're already at the top. Dumbo is already up to a 20 minute wait. Even at, so, like, we did that at a great time. Looking across the way, Alice in Wonderland is still broken at the moment. They're testing, though. There's Pete again! Oh, Mickey the Mouse! We came up here to do Chippendale's Gadget Coaster because this line also routinely has 30-minute waits throughout the day. And because it only has a single train, the loading is extremely slow. So I wanted to knock this out early. It is 8.25, and our first Fast Pass for Mickey Minis is available at 8.30. Because you can scan in five minutes early, Early to a lightning lane we could go there first but like I said I just want to get this one done beforehand enjoying this video and finding it helpful please hit the like and subscribe button and if you'd like to save money on your next Disneyland vacation call my friends at getaway today and tell them that SoCal Disney Dad sent you or click the link down in the description and use my coupon code to save on their already discounted rates now it's time for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And after we scan into that one, we're gonna immediately grab our next lightning lane. If you would like to see how actually to use Genie Plus, like a tutorial step-by-step -step on the app, you can check out the video we did a few weeks ago. I'll link to it down in the description. And I'll also link to it at the end of this one. Here we go, magic band. Happy sound. Not that there's a crazy whole amount of people to skip here. Yeah, yeah, there's no one in here. This is uh, pretty much walking straight on. Here we go. Benjamin's over here. <laughs> Welcome aboard, folks. We're ready for a relaxing ride around the park. <laughs> Whoa! 
boy! We made it! Nothing can stop us now! One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, excellent! You're all waltzing so beautifully together. Uh, 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 uh. Now, let's... It's 8.45 and we have knocked out four rides. We're going back to Fantasyland until our next lightning lane, which is gonna be Indiana Jones Adventure. We initially grabbed a time of 10.15, but I sat there and, and refreshed the screen a little bit till I could get a better time and was able to get 9.35. If you don't know the exact process of doing that, again, check out that how-to video. Today is all about as fast as we can. It's not speed. And we are going to see if we can get every single Disneyland ride done today. So we're not gonna double up on anything. We are just gonna try to hit them all. So some of the things I'm concerned about are this right here. I mean, it's not even nine o'clock. Storybook Land Canal Boats line is already pretty long. The ride itself is fairly long, so I don't wanna waste time on that during the golden hour. But um, we are gonna go see what Mr. Toad's is at now. Uh, so Mr. Toad's Wild Ride says it's five on the app, but it's 10 and the line looks like it's probably 10, but um, at least it's not as bad as it could be. At 8.50 this morning, Indiana Jones is already out to 11 o'clock this morning. That means if you were to grab that lightning lane right now, you would initiate the two hour rule. The two hour rule is that you can grab a new lightning lane after you have previously used your first lightning lane or two hours elapses. We try to avoid engaging the two hours and try to keep all of our lightning lanes you know, as quick as possible. We're going to be riding in Weasel, the Duke of Weasel Town. Welcome to Toad Hall. Hidden Mickey, Hidden Mickey. Next up is going to be Alice in Wonderland. Because we weren't able to rope drop this, unfortunately, we are going to have a bit of a line. It says it's only 15 minutes. It looks longer than that, but it says 15. This ride averages 30 minutes, but I've seen it hit 40 before, so 15 is acceptable. Well, the boys are riding in front, and we're in the back. Can you tell us how long that wait was? 20 minutes. 20 minutes, so a little bit longer than uh, it was posted at 15. Oh, that way. <laughs> It's 9.30, we got six rides done, and uh, Indiana Jones is next at 9.35, but we wanna grab a quick bite to eat from Maurice's Treats while we're on our way over there. And surprise, surprise, we got our new favorite item in all of Disneyland, the garlic cheddar cheesy bread thingy. I always butcher the name. Oh, this is just so amazing, so amazing. <laughs> Looks like Jungle Cruise is closed. But Indiana Jones is a 35 minute wait, so that should mean that our lightning lane will help us skip quite a bit. And we uh, definitely are skipping quite a bit of the line. So the last video that we did at Genie Plus, we didn't skip any line because of how early it was in the morning. So definitely happier to use it a little bit later on when we can skip some line. As we are walking through the Indiana Jones queue, I will tell you that we grabbed Space Mountain next. It was initially available for 11.10, which was an hour and about an hour and a half out from right now. But uh, I refreshed for only about two minutes and a 10.10 popped up and I was able to grab it. So what happens is that people have that 1010 reservation and then they decide to change their mind and they get rid of their own fast pass for something else. And when that happens, it opens it back up for other people. And uh, if you are quick on the button, you have to be quick. You have to see it right when it happens, uh, you can grab it. And so uh, we were able to get uh, Space Mountain for just um, about 30 minutes from now, which is pretty great. Looks like I'll be driving. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Are you ready for me to swerve and, and all that sort of fun stuff? You see the future. I will miss the curtain of time. It is your destiny. Snakes. Well, we won't ever lose Benjamin with his new shoes. Where'd the line go? It's still posted at a 35 minute wait. 
10 10 and it is time for space mountain literally got off indiana jones pretty much walked over here and this one was available to go i think we're eyeing up matterhorn next because the return time is already out to 1205 which is very nearly the two hour rule we'll see if we can get one earlier my general strategy is to try to wipe out as many of the genie plus rides that tend to go later in the day as quickly as possible and then when you're left with only the ones that are available immediately you can just really do them whenever but uh, if you wait too long you snooze too long on some of these lightning lanes that could go later in the day it might be four five six hours out and then you're always engaging the two hour rule which we don't want to do i'm still refreshing looking for a better time for matterhorn but we have not stopped walking the entire time that we've been in line walked right past the standby line i mean literally i've not even stopped for uh, half a second that's how quickly we've been walking through here and uh, this is this is great I really do highly recommend Genie Plus if you're visiting it's not terribly expensive at uh, about 30 to 35 dollars a day depending on the day not uh, five minutes later I did manage to get a better time on Matterhorn 1105 a whole hour earlier and it's just um, about 45 minutes from now <laughs> And with that, we are eight rides down. Space Mountain is done. And we have about 30 minutes to hit some more standby rides. So Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage is currently a 20 minute wait. The ride is about 15 minutes and that's 35 minutes. So that would be perfect for our Matterhorn. So I think that's what we're gonna go do right now. James, can you tell me what the wait on Alice in Wonderland was right now? 45 minutes. Wow. So not ideal, but uh, only six minutes later than it was posted at. And we are going down into the submarine. Our destination today is quite extraordinary it is uh, about 11:10 and our lightning lane became available at 11:05 for Matterhorn that's where we're going. Standby here only says 30 minutes. All right, we're next on Matterhorn Mountain. I also booked my next lightning lane for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Initially it was for 1250, but after about five minutes of refreshing, I got 1150. So another hour earlier for five minutes of refreshing. Totally worth it in my opinion. We are going to be working on another one of those best of series so we are doing the best hot dogs in disneyland so be looking forward to that video in the upcoming weeks now you might be wondering when we're going to do rides like rise of the resistance and peter pan's flight and these two rides do actually make me pretty nervous for this video because they always have long lines pretty big time commitment we are not buying an individual lightning lane for rise so our strategy is going to be to ride them at 5 30 or leading up to 5.30 because there's only one parade today and it's at 5.30. So it, normally there would be two, but since there's only one, everyone is gonna be queued up for that one. And I feel like that will take a lot of the congestion out of the park and that'll be our best shot at riding it. Stop. We're tracking an unauthorized transmission feed. <laughs> Shut it down, civilian. Our lightning lane for Smuggler's Run was for 11.50, but because of lunch, it's a little bit later than that now, it's 12.05. The standby line is a 40 minute wait, so I'm glad we'll be skipping quite a bit of a wait here. Well, this is the first instance all day where we've seen the lightning lane massively backed up. In fact, there is nobody over in the standby line yet. The standby is 40 minute wait, probably because they are going to mostly be taking care of only lightning lane. We grab a lightning lane for Roger Rabbits for 1.25 p.m. However, we are going to try to get one to see if we can get it earlier than that because it's still an hour and a half out. 
My favorite part of this ride is coming into this room while you wait. It's just perfect for Star Wars fans. Hello. Hello. That took about 20 minutes, including the ride. And uh, while we were waiting in line, I refreshed the screen quite a bit. I probably spent the whole like 10 to 15 minutes we were waiting in line, just constantly refreshing. The best I was able to get was a 20 minute upgrade. We had 125 for Rogers before, and now it is 105. Uh, past couple of times we've done the refreshing, we've managed to get a whole hour. It just didn't happen this time. We are walking by Rise of the Resistance and it is a 70 minute wait. We are definitely not riding it right now. We came up to the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and it was a 15 minute wait. So we got the Roo Pass. Our first time using this, just learned about it in the last week. It's basically Buddy Pass like Monsters Inc. And uh, we get to go down here to the exit and uh, we are gonna get the third row in the honeycomb. Now, if you see how the ride vehicle is configured, a party of four would take the front two rows and then they'll put the route pass people in the back row. The standby wait is posted at 15 minutes. We start our timer to see how much time this takes. So the only thing is that Amy and James are gonna ride separately from Benjamin and I. We're gonna be in two separate vehicles. Time? Two and a half minutes, awesome. We're both, uh, we're actually, we're gonna be in the next car after this and they're gonna be in the one behind us. So that's great. We uh, knocked that one out pretty quick. Now I think we're gonna go try to do the Davy Crockett Explorer canoes. Still have about 15 minutes until our lightning lane. Yes, it's on the other side of the park, but uh, while we're over here, we figured we might try the canoes. The line for Winnie the Pooh got really long. We still have quite a few boat rides to do. That's one of them. And uh, this is one of them too. Quite a bit of a line actually here for the canoes. Tells you it's a busier day if there's a lot of people coming to the canoes. <laughs> James' his face. About to ride the canoes. And trying to get Amy and Benjamin there. Cool, can't teach you guys manners, but I can teach you guys how to paddle. Paddles up, everybody. Bad news is there's another half to go. It's actually the scariest part of our attraction. We call it full public view. <laughs> Scary, I know. How was the canoes? Bad. Good. Why was it bad? Because Benjamin splashed you with his paddle too much. So Benjamin had fun because he got his brother wet and James didn't because he got wet. James is trying really hard not to smile. <laughs> of course, with Tiana's Bayou Adventure and Haunted Mansion under construction, we will not be riding either of those attractions in this challenge video. Took a small detour to the mint julep bar to get a huckleberry mint julep. One of you had requested that I give this a try on the channel, so here it is. Hmm has the nice minty fresh flavor of a mint julep and a little hint of the huckleberry flavor. I'd almost need like the regular mint julep right next to it to compare to know exactly like what's different about it because it feels pretty subtle to me but it's it's very refreshing. I, I love mint juleps. They're like one of my new favorite drinks. Now Amy notoriously doesn't like mint julep but she wanted to try this anyway. It's still very much a mint julep. It's tolerable though. Yeah. Like I do not not like the regular mint julep. To me, that tastes like toothpaste. Like way too much. <laughs> this like one still has that flavor to it. Yeah, but it's not as strong because yeah. it has that. Is it blackberry? You it's say? huckleberry. Or huckleberry to counteract it. So. It's 1.42 and we're at Rogers, so quite a bit later than we expected. Our first Fast Pass return time would have been just fine. We grab Pirates for 3.25, which is almost two hours away from now. Everything just keeps pushing further and further away. Like a half an hour ago, whenever we checked, Pirates was only about 40 minutes out. Now it's an hour and a half out. Uh, today is just a really busy day and more and more people are spilling into the park every moment. Are you going to make me do a lot of spinning? Oh. 
<laughs> He's having a hard time. I'm not helping him. There we go. There's Amy and James. Thankfully, I lucked out. The wheel on Roger Rabbits is so hard to turn. Benjamin literally couldn't do anything with it. So I actually had to like keep turning it to get us oriented to face the right direction. Well, we do have to do this ride eventually today though, and they will get it spinning on that one. My plan had actually been to go to Storybook Land Canal Boats, kill some time until Pirates became available. And then I was refreshing and suddenly two o'clock appeared. And that's only five minutes from now. So yeah, I'll take that over an hour and a half and we grabbed it. And even though we have to crisscross all the way back on the other side of the park, I would rather do it because Big Thunder's an hour and a half out and a couple other rides are an hour out. And I just want to make sure that we can get all of our lightning lanes done. It says it's a 40 minute wait for the standby. Everybody up there on the bridge is the standby line. The lightning lane is right here. And uh, here we go, we're gonna use it. Ooh, I like the logo on this one. It's the little pirate. A uh, big, big smile. I just checked for Big Thunder. It's been an hour and a half out and I just found it for 2.10, which is 10 minutes from now. So we're gonna ride Pirates and then immediately Big Thunder. Ooh, that was fortunate. And we rocked right into the Pirates building. And with pirates down, now it's time to head over to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I think we're gonna grab a snack after Big Thunder and the boys for all their walking deserve some Dole Whips. It's about 2.25 and it says the standby is a 40 minute wait. Lightning Lane entrance is over this way. Is this the wildest ride in the wilderness? Yeah, no. No? I mean, yeah. James, I'm watching you, always watch. They said to watch your kids. Our much deserved snack. Amy said we've done 14,000 steps by two o'clock and they've been real troopers today. So this is theirs to share all by themselves. No, and this no. is Amy and I's to share. So good. I know, does he make you wanna go back to Hawaii? Yeah, the whole time I was waiting in line for it, not that that was long, but it was at the Tiki Room. So they were playing Hawaiian music in the background. And I'm just like, and I'm wearing my Hawaii shirt. And I'm just like, oh, I wanna go back to Hawaii. <laughs> We have 20 minutes until our fast pass, lightning lane, whatever you're gonna call it, for Autopia. So we're gonna go do Pinocchio's Daring Journey now. Pinocchio's is only a 10 minute wait and the line isn't even really, like it's not even wrapping around outside here. Hi, you sleep till after two. You sleep till after two? Another hidden Mickey over here, right up there, if you can see it. Finding Nemo looks quite a bit longer than when we rode it earlier. Let's see what the posted wait time is. It says it's 30, still. It was 30 whenever we did it, but the line was a lot shorter than that. As we approach Autopia, it says it's a 25 minute wait. Of course, it doesn't really matter to us because we're using a lightning lane. Amy gets Benjamin this time. She has the crazy wild ride. James is almost tall enough to push the pedal himself, but not quite, so he wants me to do it for him. Drive us and don't hit any walls. Up, oh, you already hit a wall. You have hit a wall. You have hit a wall. Time to go off-roading. Autopia is 50 minutes now after we just got off it. Woo! I mean, we weren't staying buying it anyway, but still. No downtime whatsoever, and we're going straight to Star Tours. There's a 25 minute wait for Star Tours, for standby, of course. We're doing Lightning Lane. 
I initially got, um, you know, I don't really remember what I initially got. Four thirty, I think, for Buzz Lightyear. But I uh, was able, after just maybe like a minute of refreshing, I got four o'clock, which is in eight minutes. So we'll do it immediately after Star Tours. Are you ready for Star Tours? Prepare to be boarded, Captain. I'm afraid there's been a terrible mistake. I am seeing. We know you have this rebel spy on board. I have never seen that man before. I generally only film up to the Rebel Spy just in case, you know, it happens to be me or one of my kids or something like that, and then I miss it. So I always film that segment, but I generally don't film the actual ride, except for I love it whenever the Naboo scene happens, because at the very end, um, you like, a, a starship pokes through the viewport and the glass breaks and everything like that, and I always love being on there when people have never seen it before. The people were so surprised and excited, there was like a very loud audible gasp and then there was clapping all around at the end. Like it was, it was a really good time. And now we're headed into Buzz. James is riding with me on Buzz, but I'm too competitive to record the ride. So we'll catch you afterwards. So this is as good as I could get. I'm usually in the seven to eight hundreds. I was having a bad go. It's been eight hours and we have now done 20 rides. We have five more hours to go and we have 13 more rides to go. So can we do it? At this point, we have just one lightning lane left, and it is, it's a small world, and I am not in a hurry to start that one because it's available immediately. So um, we're going to go up into Fantasyland now and see if we can knock out some more standbys. So Peter Pan's flight is one of the ones that I've been worried about all day. It is down to a 35-minute wait on the app. It says 40 on the signboard. We'll see what it is. We're going to put the timer on. And uh, it's about an hour before parade, so I think this is about as low as it's going to get. <laughs> Hello, Tim. So it's been about 58 minutes, not 35. Let's go off to Neverland. There's Nana. Come on, everybody. Here we go. There's a hidden Mickey coming up. It's in the top of the, uh, the top of Big Ben here. Right. There, see it? There's Mommy and James. Now I tend to keep things pretty positive here on the channel, but I cannot understate how much I despise Peter Pan. Despise it. The ride, not, not the ride. The ride. The ride, not the movie. The ride, because um, I just it's not worth 60 minute wait for like two minutes of ride. I'm sorry, it's not. I don't get the fascination with it, people. It's it's gonna. If you look at the ride video I did last year of the rides that I think you need to skip, Peter Pan is one of them because of how much I despise this ride. Well, we saw that Casey Jr. said five minutes. I don't think that this is five minutes, but it's probably better than it has been lately. So uh, we are just going to go ahead and do it now. We thought about going to Rise of the Resistance right now, but it's still a 65 minute wait and it's been that for the past couple hours. So more than likely, we're just going to try to see if we can ride it as our last ride. She didn't mention that it's 5.30 and it's parade time, so our theory was that the, the wait time would drop when the parade started, and it hasn't. We're sitting in the caboose on Casey Jr. and Benjamin's got, uh, Benjamin's got a little wheel here. Oh, well, there's a the parade! Magic happens! That wait ended up being 15 to 20 minutes. It wasn't five as it was posted, but still better than the 25 that it was pretty much all day long. And now we are just gonna pop across the road here to the Red Rose Tavern and get some din-dins. Well, here is a look at our spread. I don't remember what half of the stuff is called. It all has fancy names, but this is chicken tenders. This is pizza flatbread. And this is a veggie burger. Uh, essentially, I know that this one's called the Candelabra Flaming Burger. It's actually made out of uh, black beans. So it is 100% plant-based. 
Uh, I can't really, I can't lift it up to, to give you a better look at it and the lighting in here is terrible. But uh, this is a vegan option and you guys have been asking for me to try some more vegan options. So we're gonna give this one a go. Okay, we're gonna just try one bite of this. So because it's a black bean burger, it definitely tastes like beans. Whereas, you know, like an impossible burger it is like a fake meat and it tries to taste as like meat as possible. This is definitely straight up just bean and like veggie flavoring. It's pretty good, it's got a nice little kick to it. I think there's some pepper jack cheese on here, just like the flaming part. Well, uh, final thoughts. I thought the burger was really good actually. And just a clarification, it was definitely a um, substitute cheese that I was talking about because it is a plant-based item. So it's not gonna have uh, any dairy or anything like that in it. The only complaint I had about it was that because the burger was made out of beans, anytime you would put any little bit of pressure on the bun, it would like literally squeeze all the beans out. But the flavor, the flavor was really good. So if you're looking for a great vegan option, this is a great, this is a good one. We're gonna go do mad tea party. The line looks fairly short. Um, this is just a crowd that was kind of standing outside the line. You know, I don't think I have ever been on teacups in the dark before. So this is gonna be a first. Oh, nine minutes, it's posted at 10. So that's pretty good. All right, you ready to go? Why do you look dazed? Because they're tired. <laughs> Here we go. The kids want to spin, but we just ate dinner. So let's not spin as much. Spinning, not my favorite. Nope, nope, nope. Wow, they're spinning really good. <laughs> Next, we're going straight across the way to Storybook Land Canal Books. Once again, it's posted at 10. We'll start a timer, but I doubt this one is 10. I don't think Here's I've ever done this ride in the dark either. Just keep it all matter of hands off. Now, just up ahead here, though, folks, we've got Abraba, City of Mystery and Enchantment. Probably not. Anyways, down the road from there, home, we can find Arendelle, Anna, and her frozen friends journey far and wide up to Elsa's ice palace and top the mountains. We're going to It's a Small World right now. It's our last lightning lane. After this one, we have done every single lightning lane on Genie Plus. So we at least got that one done. In Disneyland, we did not do the DCA today at all. Yeah, I mean, this is just a Disneyland video. We're going to do the same thing for DCA in... I don't know, three or four weeks. Here it is. It says it's a 15 minute wait, so at least we're bypassing something. It looks like that could actually be a little bit longer than 15, but maybe not. It's a small world at night. Eh, it doesn't really matter much. This is the only outside portion. But uh, we do get to see the Disneyland Railroad, which we are pretty much like waiting to the end to see if we even have time to do that today. Here it is, my favorite part of It's a Small World. Hawaiian roller coaster. <laughs> and just the Hawaiian area in general. Ooh, we're coming into Galaxy's Edge. I fairly rarely come in here in the nighttime. We are working our way to Rise of the Resistance right now. Ooh, there we go. We got some more pretty lights coming this way. 7.30 p.m. Rise of the Resistance is posted at 45 minutes. The lowest I have seen it all day. And we checked at various points throughout the day even more so than the 9 a.m. that I always tell people to ride it at. And 9 a.m. is still a good time. So we're like, okay, we'll hold off till right before we leave. And when we were sitting on It's a Small World, I saw it was 45. Before we did anything else, we decided to come over here. And there it is, standby. 45 minutes, still posted at it. There is a tiny bit of line in the outdoor queue and usually i feel like 45 is fully in the caves but there might be fewer lightning lanes this time of night behold the eighth wonder of the world the backside of water o2h o2h no. now we don't have to ride jungle cruise see <laughs> you hanging in there benjamin yeah yeah getting tired what'd you say you want to go home right now? Okay, as soon as we're done with this ride. 20 minutes to the Ray Room. All right, first pre-show in just 20 minutes. And we are now on the ride at 38 minutes. 
Take those turbo lifts and stay out of trouble. I always love that ride. We've ridden it in the dark before, but I, it's been so long that I've forgotten that they actually change all of the video screens to, to be dark outside, which is really awesome. Like, I mean, you talk about how immersive Rise is, and then even it's just those little touches like that that make it so much better. The kids are tired, it's 8.15. We still have Jungle Cruise, Carousel, the railroad and the monorail left to do, but we are not gonna get them all done. Um, there's still an hour and 45 minutes. We could. But the kids are just tired. I'm tired. We don't have a hotel for tonight, so we're gonna ride the monorail as our final ride. Uh, another good point to talk about is that Disneyland actually like closes probably about 80% of the time at midnight. And because it's a weekday in the like really off season, it closes at 10. So most of the time you'd have that extra two hours beyond this. I mean, I like guess it's only 8.20. And if it closes at midnight, that's still another three and a half hours. I think it's quite possible to, uh, to ride all the rides at Disneyland in a day. I will also say this, we kind of went a little nutso. Um, we had very short lunch and dinner breaks. We knew exactly what we were doing. So we had none of that like indecisive arguing with family members about what to do next. We did not take any pictures. Yeah. We did not, like, Didn't stop and stop, see any characters. Stop and smell the roses in the <laughs> like, We knew exactly what we were doing, where we were going, and we just beelined it there the whole day. The Disneyland monorail. This is gonna take us to downtown Disney. Pretty close to the parking garage. Welcome aboard the Disneyland monorail. We are now beginning the tour. Hold on to your park ticket as you leave the station. You may reboard the monorail for a return trip to Tomorrowland up until one half hour prior to Disneyland closing. Please remain seated. You know, I don't think I've ever gotten off the monorail at Downtown Disney. This is a first for me. Generally, we just ride it for the full loop. And that's it for our time riding every single ride at Disneyland. We managed to do 27. One that we missed because of time, three we voluntarily skipped that we could have done, and then there were three rides that were under refurbishment, including Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So that would have brought us up to a total of 34 had, you know, everything been perfect, whatever. Hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Click this video to keep watching. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next time.